Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And it is the week of the 107th running of the Indianapolis 500. And to celebrate, I'm doing a whole load of Indy 500 themed videos, including shorts through the decades, a few main videos that'll be up later in the week, and a whole bunch of shorter than usual One Race Wonders, covering the era when the Indy 500 was part of the Formula One calendar and looking at some of the drivers who therefore have a single F1 race to their credit. So with all that, make sure you subscribe and let's jump into the video. The subject of today's video is Jim Hercules Herterbees, a driver maybe more infamous for his antics at Indy than he is actually racing at Indy. He is a very interesting character. Born in a suburb of Buffalo, New York, he made his racing start on short tracks and early NASCAR racing, winning a round at Atlanta. He raced in the USAC series as his primary racing career and looked like a major talent when he was the fastest qualifier at the 1960 Indy 500. This was his debut Indy 500 and the final time the Indy 500 was counted as part of the Formula One World Championship. This means, technically, Jim Herterbees is a one race wonder. He had already taken his first USAC win in 1959, but was still fairly inexperienced in USAC racing. He managed to take his Christensen Offenhauser to within 15 laps of the finish before the engine died, and that was Jim Herterby's Formula 1 career. He would take three more USAC wins over the next few years, but never reached the heights of that early Indy 500 appearance. His best finish was 13th in 1962. By 1968, it became more about the show than the racing. Herterbees was no longer racing in USAC full time, focusing on his own business interests. He did have some notable Indy 500 appearances, mostly for racing outdated machinery. He ran a Novi engine in 1965. The powerful engine had never had overall success, but had been competitive, but it was nearly 10 years old by that point. It failed on the first lap. Then in 1967, Jim Herterbees began a 13 year crusade to qualify a front-engined roadster he built called the Mallard in the Indy 500. He did it once out of 10 attempts and finished 30th in the 1968 Indy 500. The whole field was rear-engined by this point and the Mallard was seriously uncompetitive. In 1972 he qualified a rear-engined Coyote Foyt into the race but lined up his Mallard on bump day for a qualification run anyway. It never left the pit lane and when time was up Herterbees opened the engine cover, revealing beer from Miller who were sponsoring him instead of an engine, which he shared with his racing colleagues. What a legend. His final Indy 500 appearance was in 1974 in a McLaren, but he would continue to try and qualify his Mallard Roadster. In 1978 he caused a commotion when officials refused to let him attempt to qualify on bump day. I just want to talk a little bit about the Jim Herdeby situation. I explained it a moment ago. He has put his car right in front of uh, the next qualifier, and that's Bob Hartke. Every car, in order to be on the track, uh, must have, first of all, uh, an inspection sticker, and that permits them to practice. Then they get their final inspection uh, sticker, and that's based on safety and whether or not the machine can actually make racing speeds. And they've been timing Jim Herdeby's and that old roadster that he calls it the Mallard uh, all month long. He's never gotten over 175 miles an hour, and they say a rookie has to pass tests at that. So they have not given him the final inspection sticker. Now, Herdeby's at the moment is standing right in front of car number 42 with Bob Hartke, who is the next car in line, and defying the USAC officials, that's Tom Benford, the chief steward, to move it. And he's waving, uh, what he is waving is not a court order, but actually the entry fee, or rather the entry blank, and defying them to show him where uh, it says that he has to run 180 miles an hour. That's the situation. It's unfortunate. Jim has brought a lot of uh, uh, criticism upon himself this year uh, uh, by bringing that car out again and trying to get into the field, and he's just not going to make it. And I, the USAC officials have refused to give him that second or final uh, a sticker, and that's the situation right now. It's going to be a big story, obviously, and you're going to see it develop here this afternoon. They could actually bring a, a hook or, you know, a wrecker out and put a hook on it and pull it away. 
And then if he does that, I imagine there'll be a lawsuit from Mr. Hurd if he's. That's what he's threatening, at least. That's what he was threatening yesterday. Yeah, he was very upset about it yesterday, and uh, he pointed out to me the fact that, you you know, there's nothing that says that you have to run up a certain mm. speed. So that's that's his point of contention. Of course, the entry uh, blank that he has, the rules and so on, he's he's going over that with him right now. His car was too slow, but Hurtabees argued there was no rule stating he had to make a minimum speed. He parked his car in front of the next qualifier so he couldn't leave the pits, halting qualifying whilst officials and Hurtabees argued. When they tried to move the car around the Mallard, Hurtabees just jumped into his competitor's car and continued to hold it up. It's got to be updated, but it looks the same to me as it did the last couple of years. Yeah, I'm not sure how much updating was done on that car over the winter. It, uh, John put it in the show with a bonsai run late in the afternoon uh, last year, so you never know. It might happen again. Well, Bob Harkey, there's no question of the fact that he is a definite veteran. I would like to see him in a, uh, perhaps a better car, if we could put that more politely. Here we go. It looks like uh, they're escorting somebody out. Who is that? Is that her to bees? Well, it's kind of difficult to tell at this point, but I would suggest he is the only one who is causing a commotion down there. Perhaps uh, it is Jim. As you pointed out, he's not uh, too bad at getting publicity. Not a bad article in Sports Illustrated. He got three pages more than the World Series last year. So Jimmy does a pretty good job in that direction. As we mentioned, they've got the engine started now in the car. Driven by Bob Harkey, we have only 32 cars qualified. We need one more to start to fill the field, and then the bumping will start. Let's pick up the PA and Tom Carnegie. And his crew will go to the north end of the pit area. Everyone behind the yellow line. Now there goes Hurtabees out onto the track, trying to hold up this qualification. And certainly for the good, of racing, Hurtabees is certainly not doing himself any good at all. Well, I think he just has killed all the fan interest in Hurtabees over the years by his actions at the moment, trying to hold up qualifications. Now, everybody get back. That's everybody get back. Everybody get back. When it finally did get out on track, Jim ran onto the racetrack before being tackled by police. Not very sporting, but very funny and somehow very American motor racing. He would attempt to qualify a couple more times and sadly passed away in 1989. But he is a Formula One one race wonder and an absolute legend for his antics. Jim Hurtabees will forever be remembered as, well, as an insane man who tried to ruin an Indy 500. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. More Indy 500 content coming this week, as well as a few other videos. So make sure you subscribe. Have a good one. I really don't understand. We've both known Jim for a long time, and I do not at this point understand what he's trying to prove. I'm not sure either, you know. Uh, sometimes you get a little bitter about the big business, the high finance that seems to go racing right now, and uh, that's always been a concern of Jim's. And possibly he was on the racetrack. He uh, might have saw some oil, a, a piece of rock, or, uh, you know, something out there he wanted to get off the, the track. But uh, right now I don't understand Jim at all. Okay, let's stay with the action on the track. They're trying to get all the people moved back and uh, get everybody out of the area where the area of the wall, the pit wall, is restricted to two people per car, and there are definitely a lot of people. Jim Hurtabee is now being led away through the Tower Terrace area by some state troopers, and I believe it did take a state trooper to get Jim out of here. Okay, Bob Harkey's going back out again.